Welcome into Minnesota Vikings Now. I am Tom Downey, and the NFL trade deadline is a week away. It's always too early in the calendar. But with the Vikings clearly contenders this year, we're taking a look at some different trade rumors and trade targets for the Vikings before that trade deadline. Now, if you want the Vikings to make a move, then hit that big red button and subscribe right now. A, we have the data to prove it. When you subscribe, the Vikings do more things you want them to do. It's just a cause and effect from that standpoint. And, of course, if the Vikings do make a trade before or on the trade deadline, we'll cover it for you here at Minnesota Vikings Now. Hit that big red subscribe button right now. Four different trade targets on tap today, beginning with a very intriguing name who I do think is available. Deron Payne, the commander's defensive lineman. Now, former first-round pick back in 2018, uh, 13th overall out of Alabama. He has had a very impressive season and a contract year, mind you. Payne has taken a step forward as both a run stopper and most impactfully as a pass rusher. Payne is the rare three-down defensive lineman that NFL teams love to covet in the modern-day NFL. The Commanders allegedly want a day-two pick for him. I think a third is a much more palatable for the Vikings and B, much more realistic uh, as an asking price for Washington. And hypothetically, by the way, Trade away, you trade for Deron Payne. If you don't extend him, he would be eligible for a comp pick. You could get as much as a third round pick in that process. It's a year later, but it is worth it there. Imagine this Vikings front starting Dalvin Tomlinson, Harrison Phillips, and Deron Payne. All three guys can play across your 3 4 base front. That helps you against the run. And Payne is a true three down player, allowing you to have a heavy rotation and heavy impact from that standpoint of actual pass rush, and actual run-stopping production. No disrespect meant to guys like Bullard and Lynch and Blacklock, but Payne is better than all of them, and I would probably argue just as good, if not better, than Phillips or Tomlinson. And contending teams have had success being aggressive, right? The Rams add Von Miller and Odell Beckham. The Bucks add Antonio Brown. That worked for a little bit. Chiefs, and, oh, actually via a waiver claim, added Terrell Suggs. Jay Ajayi played a big role for the Eagles in their Super Bowl run. The Patriots, Kyle Van Noy. Teams who are winning and successful should be aggressive at this timeline. You are in a wide open NFC. Adding an impact player, offense or defense, is what aggressive and I would argue smart NFL teams do in the modern day NFL. You don't have to go full F them picks like the Rams, but trade away a third round pick for Deron Payne. Get a comp pick back later or and or pay him long term? Not a bad swap as far as I'm concerned. So what do you think? Do you want to trade for Deron Payne? T for trade, P for pass. This question is the pinned comment on today's video. So if an ad break happens to come here on YouTube, cool. Let Allow it to play. Help me feed my family. Head down there. T for trade, P for pass. Number two is Mike Gesicki, the Miami Dolphins tight end who... I think is available, maybe, maybe not. A little bit of uh, inconsistent information on that front. But I do know this. Gasicki is not what Mike McDaniel wants in his tight end for the Miami Dolphins. He wants a better blocker. To be blunt, Gasicki is not a good blocker. He, he is basically a big slot receiver, which is not a bad thing. He's flashed ability. He's flashed red zone looks. And the Vikings have blocking tight ends. Johnny Munt can do that. Ben Ellison can do that. Hell, Irv Smith's not a terrible blocker either. But Irv Smith also, unfortunately, has a rather troubling injury history. So adding a player like Gasicki who I will make note is maybe a little bit more expensive than you'd want. I think the Dolphins would have to eat some of that money. It was a $10.93 million franchise tag this year for Gasicki, all in base salary. The Vikings would not owe all of that, but they would owe the pro-rated amount, meaning whatever is left game check-wise. So we can do some fast and loose math. It's about half of it. It's about $5 million for the back half of the season. It's still a little bit pricey. With well, with injury history... You want to add a good tight end, got to do it before he gets hurt, not after because if it's after the trade deadline, you're in trouble. So which side of the ball do you believe is more important to add some help for this Vikings roster? O for offense, D for defense. I think you're about to get our answer based on the next two positions we look at. But sound off, O or D? 
Only sounds slightly dirty when you say it like that. Number three, Desmond King, the cornerback from the Houston Texans. King falls into a, a rather rare bucket of NFL players who are typically well-regarded by fans, even of the fans of teams he's played for, well-regarded by the the graders, the film study guys, etc., PFF included there. As you'll see in his grades, they're quite impressive. 76.5 overall, good against the run, pass rush coverage. He plays nickel corner. He's always graded out pretty well. He was highly impactful last year. Three interceptions, six pass breakups, 93 tackles. Those are pretty good coverage numbers. Sounds like a guy you want, but for whatever reason, he's never gotten paid like it. And the NFL as a whole unit doesn't value him the same way. And that makes him a trade candidate, as far as I'm concerned, for a, a bad Texans team. The Vikings have an interesting situation at corner. You know, Patrick Peterson, Cam Danzler, even Andrew Booth a little bit, Shannon Sullivan been a bit, have been a bit up and down. King has played outside, and he's played in the nickel. And given what the slate of opponents coming up is, you should maybe consider adding some cornerback help in the nickel too, right? Cardinals have Dundra Hopkins back. They've added receiver talent. The Commanders have Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel in the slot. The Bills, well, we know how good that offense is. CeeDee Lamb, by the way, for the Cowboys, plays a lot of slot receiver. And the Patriots love to throw to Jacoby Myers in the slot as well. You want some defensive help? Now's the time to add it before the schedule gets a little bit tougher in the back half-ish of the campaign. Got a fantastic deal for you guys available from our good friends over at Fanatics. The t-shirt combo pack is still on sale. Yeah, the deal does not last forever. It's basically until supplies last, so get going while you still can. Chatsports.com slash Vikings combo. That link will be in both the comment section and in the description of today's video. So head down there, simply click it. Shop, buy it for yourself, a family member, a loved one, whatever. They have great selection. It's an awesome t-shirt combo pack. It's basically two for the price of one, given how expensive NFL official license gear is. But it's a great deal at Fanatics. Chatsports.com slash Vikings combo. Number four, let's go to the Carolina Panthers and Jeremy. Let's get interesting with it here. Maybe the least available name on this list, but the Panthers are selling, especially after the Christian McCaffrey trade. Now, I think Vikings fans will remember Jeremy Chin from that 2020 game, which is the last we will speak of it. I do think Jeremy Chin is maybe not being used quite right by the uh, Carolina Panthers. The PFF grades are not very good. It is just a grade. The pass rush is high. I think they're too low on his run defense. The coverage is not, I don't think, being used right. Jeremy Chin is what I call a, a flex piece, a, a chess piece, if you will, on defense. He's labeled as a safety he kind of plays linebacker more than anything else. Like he's, he's actually his build wise, he's not that differently built than Brian Osamoa. Like he's he's almost built like a weak side linebacker for at least the modern day. He's he's a a lighter linebacker, a heavier box safety. But Chin can cover some tight ends. He can blitz. I think he's solid in the run, despite what PFF might say. Chin is a fun asset if you want to get creative with multiple safety looks, which you can't do as much right now for Minnesota because of the Lewis scene injury. So Chin, if he's available, might cost you a second or a third round pick, is a good name to keep an eye out for in terms of the higher level big fish to take a swing at for the Vikings. That is the end of today's video. If you made it this far, makes you a real one. So head down to the comment section and type in real one, and producer Patrick, our diehard Vikings fan here, will show you some love.